Yeah, you know, I, not much, and I still am. I mean, I, I love Tom Brady. I love Belichick. I still, like like Mike Holmgren said, 20 guys in a bar think it's a fumble. It should be a fumble. <laughs> right. Back. I'm good with that rule. Hey, by the way, before we start, I don't know if you, this is great that we have you on here because it just came over the wire. I want to get your reaction. Jason Garrett accepting the Notre Dame job. What do you think? <laughs> well, he went to Princeton, so he's smart, you know? I, I, mean, you know, I couldn't even, yeah. I couldn't even sell you for a second. You didn't buy it for even a second, a redhead <laughs> yeah. to go Notre Dame? Uh-huh. What? I'm sure Troy Aikman made a call this morning to the AD. I wouldn't be surprised. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I, I just don't know if that could sell. You know, I don't no. know if that could sell to the Notre Dame <laughs> alum. I think why spacing on every first down probably is not going to go over well at Notre Dame football. Yeah, that's true. But these coaching deals are out of hand. The uh, the price tag for the big names, have, I think they've tripled in a decade. I look back, Pete Carroll was making... Four million a year in 2009. That was seen as ridiculous. They gave Lincoln Riley like 35 percent of Disneyland. What do you think of this? Uh, who's who's well, at I, fault here? I, well, nobody. I mean, the the money, the revenue that are coming in, you know, to the t- to the schools is so enormous. There's so much at stake that people feel like they have to pay, and you know, mm-hmm. competition. It, it, it water seeks its level. So it continues to go up and the players now can get compensated. You know, it used to be right. where the coaches were just making all the money. Now the players have their licensing agreement. It's not going to be as lucrative as some of these, you know, an LSU, the LSU coach or Alabama, but at least they can make some money off of it. But look, if you want to have a good program, you need a good coach. I'm not sure they're getting all these good coaches. I'm not sure this is, you know, the level of coaching from the NFL to the to college is a little different. So, mm. you know, we'll see, but uh, you got to pay to get what you want. Well, so and it's weird though. Doing. The way it's going is so Lincoln Riley, obviously avoiding the sec, right? He's like, I don't want five losses in a year. I'll go to, I'll go to the pac 12 where I'll win the, the South or whatever it is. Brian Kelly looks forward to go. just wants to be in a conference. Was this the right move? Like which surprised you more? Well, Lincoln going to uh, USC didn't surprise me at all. I mean, I think that that kind of fit. They had Graham Harrell as the offensive coordinator. Look, I think the thing about Lincoln Riley is he the, every you know he's had quarterbacks that have won the Heisman, but it's it's the run game that really is what sustains his offense. It's mm-hmm. we see it with Jalen Hurts. It's you got to be able to run the ball. So there's some of that. Uh, I, I think he I think Oklahoma because they were so linked to Texas. They had to go into the Southeast Conference. I don't think that was something that that was really prudent for Oklahoma in the sense that they could get to the Final Four just by being in the Big 12. But now he comes to the Pac-12. He's going to get the best high school quarterback every single year. He's going to have great, you know, great offenses, big offensive linemen. I mean, he's going to walk himself into the Final Four every single year. Mm-hmm. Will he be battle tested enough to beat those teams like he wasn't at Oklahoma? It remains to be seen. Now, we, yesterday we asked Darren, the parlay kid, if he could have any job in college football, which would it be? Now, really, the the threshold was very low because he gets paid forty five hundred dollars a season <laughs> to coach middle school, uh, you know, local middle school football. Um, before we give you his answer, I want to get your answer. Best job, college football, if you could have it. Uh, the best. Well, I think LSU is one of them because mm-hmm. it's such a fertile, fertile recruiting area. I mean, it's so good that the. Louisiana has so many talented young players. You're close to Texas. You know, you could get into Florida. I think it's one of the great, great jobs in college football. I think, you know, uh, you've got to be able to want to live in Baton Rouge, which is not the easiest place to do, uh, especially from somebody from the North. But I, I think it's one of the best jobs in college football, second to none. It should compete for a national championship every single year. It's a special place. I, I would say off the beaten track, North Carolina should be one of the best jobs. Really? Hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's an incredible campus. You're in the ACC. You should be able to entice the best co- high school quarterbacks from anywhere in the country. It, it's a, I don't want to hear that it's a basketball school because it's a great school. Hmm. You know, and I think it's, it, to me, it's what I call a phone and a desk school. You know, all you need is a phone and a desk, and you can get anybody you want to go to school there. Just get them on campus. Just get them on campus, and you'll get them there. And so I think those would be the two that I would just jump out to me. Interesting. Now he said Texas, and uh, uh, of course it's great if you could do well. But I, I mean, did you watch Friday Night Lights? This is a high school coach, a, a miserable, miserable life. Otherwise, it's, uh, it's so many expectations. 
I think the reason Texas football is down is because of the, the, these five stars and all these great kids that you have to kiss their butts to get them to go with you. Then you can't coach them. I, I wrote about this today for the Daily Coach. I think one of the reasons Rick Pitino's had so much success at Iona is he can coach the way he wants to coach. Uh -huh. If he can coach hard, he doesn't have to worry about pissing off the mother because they're not playing the kid enough minutes to get to the NBA. He doesn't have to worry about the booster program. I mean, he went from playing in a 20,000 seat arena to playing in 3,000 seat arena that he shares with the women's volleyball team, the men's volleyball team, and the men's and the women's basketball. So he coaches two stars into four stars. At Texas, you got to take these five stars. Whether they're five stars or not, you got to take them. They're Texas high school kids. You got to take them. And there's a sense that there's just not enough grit in the program. I think it's been clear. One of the things that Charlie uh, Strong complained about when he was at Texas was simply this we're taking way too many of these Texas kids that just don't have the grit that the Florida kids have. Hmm. And we're not going to beat them. And I think you see it. You lose to Kansas at home. You think you uh, got grit in your program? Why'd you have to bring that up? I lost so much money on that. So much money, Lombardi. Uh, no, you're right, though. I mean, it's and especially you see it in basketball. Like, no one's yelled at Joel Embiid since he's been 13 years old, right? No, I don't know. No, how, do you, how do you coach that guy? Yeah. See, how do you coach the guy? And then if you piss off the mom, you know, they're going to transfer a portal. They're out of here. You know, you got to be able to, you got to take a job where you can coach your personality, you mm -hmm. know, where you can coach them hard. And, you know, and, and I think Saban does it at Alabama. And that to me is the key is sometimes you take jobs where you compromise your coaching skills. Look at, look yeah. at dude, when, when, when Krzyzewski's taking these one and dones, their program hasn't really been the same. He can't quite get the same thing out of them. Right. Except everyone's losing to him on purpose this year. So they're going to go, they're going to run the <laughs> table. I know. I know what you're saying though. All right, let's switch gears to the pros. And I see a trend developing and I don't like it. Casual fans are starting to root for the Patriots. <laughs> and I know you've been on board for years. Uh, Darren, the parlay kid, this is now his second favorite. team. might be his favorite team. Belichick plus 350 to win coach of the year, which is uh, nonsensical that he hasn't won this award in over a decade. But go ahead. Let me hear you go off on the Patriots. I'll give you a couple minutes. Well, I, I think that Kingsbury is coach of the year right now. Mm. I mean, for the fact that Kingsbury goes up into Seattle with Colt McCoy and wins, the fact that Kingsbury goes into San Francisco with Colt McCoy and wins, the fact that he goes into Los Angeles, the greatest team ever built, the Los Angeles Rams, the greatest <laughs> team ever built, right? You know, and he kicks their ass. I mean, what more does the guy have to do? He has, he's won. I mean, when's the last time anybody's seen Kyle Murray? Right. So I, I think Kingsbury certainly deserves coach of the year, but Belichick to me has, you know, he'll never win coach of the year because everybody just expects what he does to be the same all the time. For me, you know, I think this is, this is just a byproduct of who he is. He needs, last year, there was no offseason. There was no OTA. There was no real training camp. There was no in season. October of last year, he had so many guys hurt that mm -hmm. on COVID that they couldn't practice. This year is the evolution. This is what makes the Patriots and him such a good coach. Mini camps, OTA days, training camp. I, I think what you see this year is just a byproduct of his teaching. He's building, you know, he teaches a football course and how to win games. And I think that he has a receptive audience and drafted Mac Jones, even though all the analytical people said, you can't pick Mac Jones third overall in the draft that the, that the 49ers traded up to get Trey Lance because he was by far the greatest player that ever played football, even though he only played one game <laughs> and threw the least amount of passes of any college quarterback who got drafted in the first round. Crazy. Pro football focused and all the analytical people said you got draft, you know, mm -hmm. and he just sat there and picked the best player, you know? So I, I think it's kind of a renewed his love of teaching and coaching. And I think you see it with the way the team plays. Yeah. I almost think if they would have been better off going like four and uh, 12 last year, and then he definitely would have won coach of the year this year, even though you're right. Mac Jones fell right. In his I lap. think the fact that he won seven games last year yeah. is remarkable. I think yeah. it's remarkable he won seven games last year. I mean, the fact that he had no passing game, basically he, his defense by the end of the year had nobody left on it. He couldn't really stop anybody. And But I think this year he got back to being what he wanted to do. He's got, he could set the edge with his defense. He's got a really physical offensive line. He could run the football. I don't think they're perfect. I think we almost forget that Mac Jones is a rookie quarterback. We almost mm -hmm. like dismiss it. And here's Mac Jones. He's a three-point dog going into Buffalo. He's a rookie quarterback. You know, he's never even been to Buffalo. 
Right. You know, That's true. We've never seen them play in 20 degree weather. We've never seen them throw the ball with 15 mile an hour winds. And yet people are giving them the benefit of the doubt. I think it'd be hard. Yeah, I think so too. And yeah, people don't realize there'll be a game and a half out if they lose to the bills and the bills are favored to win that game. Um, but yeah, it's, it's been a, a great run. I'm just, uh, I just want it to end for the Patriots. I know you don't, I know you. <laughs> no, I mean, my son's the receiver coach. Why would I want it to end? I think no. it's, a, I think it's, I think it's everything that, you know, everybody was complaining about how, you know, Belichick lost his fastball and it was all Brady. And, and I kept saying it was a combination of the two, you know, it always was. What is your son? Uh, what does he say about these receivers? Uh, is he pleasantly surprised or did he think he had a good crop through the free agency? Aguilar and Kendrick Bourne is a, uh, makes a dynamic catch every week. Now it seems. I, I, I think he was very positive about him. And I think Keneal Harry's actually starting to play. You see some of hmm. what he did to miles Garrett Bakken was unbelievable. And then he started to make some more plays. I, I think as a team, everybody's improving and adding Hunter Henry and John U. Smith gives them a chance to, to control the middle of the field. Then the Stevenson kid, I think the biggest surprise of all is Stevenson's ability to be really active in the passing game. I think that's a big thing. Mm-hmm. All right. Now let's uh, switch focus to my team, the Parley kids team there. Um, we got news. Mike McCarthy is going to miss Thursday's game after testing positive for COVID. <laughs> I have to say, I'm not worried. I'm worried for him a little bit, but I'm not worried for the team. Dan Quinn, who had a rough going uh, Thursday against the Raiders. He's going to serve as the interim coach. We've seen games before where the coach misses, the coordinators took over. It seems to me, or am I crazy, that the assistant coaches being out is a bigger detriment to the team than the head coach being out. You know, I don't know why McCarthy carries that play sheet with him. He doesn't call any plays. <laughs> right. He's got that huge play sheet with him that he had in Green Bay. Yeah. And it's the, it's the Green Bay play sheet, but yet... When you look at Kellen Moore, he's not looking at the same play sheet. Like it looked like he, they have the different tests they're taking. So I think he needs I mean, to fan himself. He needs to use. He's always about to pass out, so he yeah, needs to create I've some air. Mike, Mike was always reminding me of a beat cop walking the beat, you know, on the sidewalk. You know? <laughs> right. I think that uh, I think they'll be fine. I think they'll be fine without Mike. I, I, I'm not being disrespectful <laughs> to Mike, but Kellen Moore's going to call call the plays. <laughs> Yeah. Who's going to call the defense? I think what they have to make sure they do is John Fossil doesn't go crazy and run 17 trick punts. I think that's going to be the biggest concern. Right, you know? right. I mean, he's going to have a fake field goal, a fake punt. He's going to have, you know, he's going to have a double reverse off of, you know. So I think somebody's got to make sure John Fossil's under control a little bit here. Right. Um, Zeke, um, um, yeah, there's more and more talk about resting him and, you know, uh, Pollard's the heart and soul of the offense anyway. I, I'm, I'm, I'm coming around on it. I think, I think we win the division. I know Washington got a lot of buzz. People are going crazy now, but the, the Cowboys play them twice. They play the Eagles once. They play the Giants once. If they're going to win the division, they have to take care of business and at least split with Washington. Um, th- what do you think about sitting Zeke? Uh, well, I think the problem with sitting Zeke is Pollard's really good. Pollard's a liability in pass protection. Blocking, yeah. Blocking. You know? And mm-hmm. so when he's in the game, people just start blitzing. I mean, mm-hmm. this is what's happened now. And so you got to be really careful because – if you if he's in there and you know you know you're going to get a lot of pressure on Dak, it heart hurts. I think they should. They're going to need Zeke in, in the month of December as we come into it. They're going to need you know because we play two games in the January. I think they're the best team. I mean Washington struggled to beat Seattle yesterday last night. I mean it was you know Seattle's way off. I mean Seattle's way off. Russell had DK Metcalf open for the two point conversion if he just mm-hmm. throws the thing. I mean Seattle's not playing well. They struggled to beat them. I'm not sold on Washington quite yet. I think this will be a hard game for them out in Las Vegas this week. Yeah, for sure. Who gets the MVP in the NFL? We just went over the college Heisman. We're unsure of that, even though Bryce Young's a pretty uh, substantial favorite. Doesn't seem like anybody wants that award. Doesn't seem like anybody wants the pro football MVP award. Um, Is it Justin Tucker? Who who gets it? (laughs) I mean, Tucker would be a really, I mean, is there any more, more, uh, certainty than J- Justin Tucker. I mean, whether he, you know, that really the only uncertainty of Tucker is whether he misses eight inches left of the middle upright of right. the, of the, or eight inches to the right. I mean, yeah, he's ridiculous. Question, mm-hmm. Right. So, and he takes away all doubt. Um, I, I think to me, it's Aaron Rodgers or Tom Brady. I put the political stuff aside, COVID, all that crap. Aaron Rodgers is dynamic. I mean, he I goes know. into Arizona with basically without his receivers and you know, he goes out there and finds a way to win the game. And then last week against the greatest football team ever assembled, the Rams, <laughs> you know, he, he, uh, he just 
that he dominates them from start to finish. <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, I know they have the greatest rusher in Von Miller and they have that, that Aaron Donald, but did anybody really put any pressure on, on Rogers with a, I mean, that backup left tackle, I'm not sure he'd go back to his college and start. And yet they got through the game with him. Uh, and they're on like that fourth tackle and it, and Aaron Jones is a game time decision. Nothing ever seems to matter. Right. Like the, and, no, and the Packers I mean, are underdog at home. Like it just, but if you're uh, a true voter in the contest, and you watch the Packers play against the, the, the chiefs. You realize how valuable he is to your team. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, he, he, he clearly demonstrated in that game by not playing. He's the most valuable player in the league. I think uh, I'm going to make a prediction. Brady flexes his muscles this week. I already put up a, a monster game against Atlanta. He does the same this week, you know, in Atlanta this time. And, uh, you know, four, I don't know five touchdowns. They, I, if you look at Tampa's schedule, there might be one more loss on that schedule. I know. Yeah. And he'll keep putting great numbers up there. And he's doing it now with Gronk back. Once he gets Antonio back, he starts mm-hmm. to get more comfortable. I mean, look, he could easily win it too. I think it's a two man race. I think it's Brady or Rocky. I think you're right. All right. Harry is dying to ask you a question. Um, try to uh, uh, disregard what he's wearing. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> and Mike, uh, just wondering like, with Tennessee situation, they've lost two in a row. Um, no Henry. Tanny Hill's got one more touchdown pass and an uh, interception. Uh, like I said, they've lost two in a row. Rams have lost three in a row. Who's in more trouble? Well, I think Tennessee is because Tennessee has all those guys hurt. I mean, and they don't get, you know, last week they had two backs that rush over hundred yards. They have a six, nine up rush and they score, they couldn't score enough points. The pressure on Tannehill is too hard. You know, the offensive line gets beat up and defensively they're playing better, but they just can't really, when they miss all these players that they're missing, it's hard for them. The Rams to me, you know, I think they got exposed in the Arizona game. I think they got really exposed. You know, when, when, uh, uh, when, when, uh, uh, the Niner game, the Tennessee came out there and just kicked their ass up. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Tennessee just beat them up, but Tennessee had no respect. Tennessee just whooped that offensive line. I think what's happened to the Rams is the Rams, because of golf, the Rams knew they could not run drop back pass because of golf. The Rams knew their offense. They had to protect their offensive line. And they had a protector. And now they get Stafford. They say, okay, we, we don't have to protect our line anymore. We don't have to protect the quarterback. We could just do what we do. And mm-hmm. now they find out how shitty that line is, right? They find out how shit and people are covering up the three inside players and they're pushing them back into Stafford. Stafford, that team looked like the Detroit teams used to take up there. Yeah. And so to me, I, I and then why are we paying all this money to Jalen Ramsey and he's not covering the best receiver? Right. Like, why are we doing that? And then, you know, we trade a two and a three for Von Miller. Von Miller, they've got more sacks in Denver when Miller left and then when he was there. So it crazy? Me, I, I think the Rams are, are in trouble. I think they're, they're, you know, everybody puts this stat up. Sean McVay with the lead at halftime. Does anybody put the stat up when Sean McVay doesn't have the lead at halftime? Hmm. That's not as right? much fun. Yeah, you're right. No, it's not as much fun because they're a front-running team. The Rams are a front-running team. So they have an easy game against the Jags, but then at Arizona, um, they already lost to them at SoFi. Uh, all right, Seattle, whatever. They go to the Vikings, who are going to be hungry for a win day after Christmas, at the Ravens, and then home against the 49ers January 9th, who will probably be competing for the sixth or seventh spot at that point. I think schedule-wise, maybe the Rams are uh, maybe in a little more trouble. It's interesting. I mean, I think so. I mean, look, the Titans, sir, the Titans with Ray will find a way to win. Now, they've turned the ball over way too much. And during their win streak, they were really good at protecting the football, but they have so many guys hurt. I think it's just hard for them to bounce back. I think it's going to be hard for them to ever get control of the game. And they don't really know, uh, you know, like Foreman was a really talented, he's a five-star kid coming out of Texas high school. Uh-huh. I mean, there, there was nobody more talented than Foreman coming out. He's just not always reliable. All right, Harry, that wasn't too terrible. You have another question? Uh, well, I was just going to say also the pressure, if that comes down to the last week for the Rams to make the playoffs, um, boy, I'll tell I you, he, he's well, I'm just saying, own, he's own five lifetime against San Francisco. Oh, yeah, wow. I mean, I think the Rams, I, I think what's happened to the Rams is instead of staying on the program they had with golf, they thought Stafford was going to cure it. And, it. and now all of a sudden there's more problems that, that have been created. That line doesn't protect Stafford's mm-hmm. beat up too. We yeah. know that. Yeah. Right. Now, Mike, Maybe I'll the talk. Line- 
Oh, go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No, I thought maybe the wife should protect him. She's throwing pretzels in the stands and everything. She seems like a force <laughs> to be reckoned with. Go ahead, Eric. Listen, Mike, 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 these guys have given me a lot of crap over the season about being a Minnesota Vikings backer this season. Um, right now, still, even after that loss against San Francisco, uh, they're still the seventh seed. They if suck. they get in, and mind you, 10 of their 11 games, 10 of their 11 games this year have been, have been one score endings. Um, can they do damage as a seventh seed in the uh, NFC? Uh, you know, I think if they have Dalvin Cook back, they're always a threat to do damage. I don't trust their defense well enough, especially the secondary. I think the 49ers took advantage of it. I mean, look, they should have covered last week. I mean, they got the break. They got the break that they missed the field goal, right? Robbie Gould missed the field goal. They got it. I don't know how they don't get the pass interference call. If, if that hockey league crew would have been calling that game, they would have called seven pass interference penalties on that last drive. Right. You know, my man Tim Mills, the back judge. Nobody likes to throw a flag more than Tim Mills. I mean, he's liable to become a police commissioner. He can't wait to call it out. <laughs> so you know, I mean, it, it's unbelievable. What do we do uh, about this, Lombard? I, I mean, obviously, I hated that game, and it was the most viewed regular season game in in a long, long time. And yet, there were fourteen plus flags on each side. It was uh, disgraceful to watch. I mean, you know, look, Sean Hockley was two and nine going into that game this season for the road team, he, the road team for the home team. It's like I, I don't know how that, that makes sense either. Like, what what is that about? <laughs> he no just idea. wants to well, piss off true. the fans. When I was in the league, that back judge Mills, he's going to call everything. He thinks people actually pay to watch him officiate. <laughs> he thinks people are driving to the stadium Sunday morning. Oh, I can't wait to see Tim Mills officiate today. <laughs> you know, like I can't wait. You know, and it's like last night. I mean, we if he would have been call, calling the game last night, he would have called six of them. Right, right. Interesting. I mean, so like, I, I, there's no consistency. There's never been. I mean, we don't get my man Scott Novak on a national televised game. You think you think Hockley's bad? Mm. I think Scott Novak's. You know, his career. He's for the road team. I mean, he's one of the worst of. You know, the last twenty penalty game was Scott Novak. I mean, he mm. loves it. He can't wait to officiate. By the way, I just looked on Fandle. Scott Novak, fifteen to one to win MVP. That's our <laughs> answer right there. He Give it to be. one of these back judges. He, he could, yeah. Well, Here's the here's what people don't pay attention to. What what playoff game will Hockley get this year? And mm -hmm. that'll tell you everything you need to know. Because if he gets a playoff game, that right. means he graded high. That means he's doing exactly what the league wants him to do. Right. All right. Uh babyface Joel Solomon, jump in here. Well, you you're upset with Harry's question? I am I just owe uh, Michael an apology. I, I Harry told me his question was going to be about Jersey Mike sandwiches. You know, Joe, I, I gave Jersey Mike's a bad, I, I gave him a lot of crap when we were together at the ringer there, but I mean, the guy donates so much money. I can't, I can't get mad at him anymore. I almost want to support him. I like this guy's really a nice guy. He's giving away a bunch of sandwiches. I mean, if you grew up on the East coast, you know, yeah. like if you grew up in ocean city, you're not going to, there's no Jersey Mike's in ocean city. However, my hat's off to the guy for doing it. Well, you were mad because Simmons was cheaping out on the staff lunch, but yeah, no, you shouldn't you should blame it on. <laughs> hey, uh, to blame hey it on Seth, Mike I could, I could yeah, just, I think Jump Mike uh, should know that Joel uh, was a Hofstra guy. Yeah, oh, we, we know are. they they worked Joel's together. Joel's a Hofstra guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they we worked both, together. We the both ringer. are. Yeah, yep. we both are. I mean, except you know, Joel didn't graduate. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure I did. I'm not sure I did either. Uh, <laughs> Francis Ford Coppola. I'm not sure he graduated too, but we all have that. You know, we're all in that. What's what's her name? Queen Lativa, right? She graduated. Joel. They yeah. A few. Uh, yeah. Well, what's wait? The Dutchman too. What what's wrong with the Dutchman? How was that offensive to anybody? I don't understand it. Oh, I don't even like hearing it out of your mouth. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I hate it. What Wayne Corbett was the greatest uh, Hofstra player, or am I missing one? Marcus no, Colston. Think... Colston, Colston. Yeah. Marcus Colston, yeah. But wasn't Gino Carmazzi the third round pick of the 49ers? I can tell you that. Gino Carmazzi <laughs> went the, the Brady draft, right? I think he did, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he did. Willie Colon, yeah. Lance Schultz, yeah. and yeah. of course, Mike Lombardi. There you go. Yeah, right. Schultz. <laughs> Gino, Gino Quinn coach there. Yeah. Dan Quinn coach. Yeah. Gino Carmazzi, we tried to get him, right, Joel, Joel for, the for the Thursday, Thursday night, night uh, Fox pregame bit. And he's um, that's the guy that's like a goat farmer that doesn't own a TV, right? In Northern California, he, we could not track him down. He's like Richard Simmons at this point. He's uh, he's gone missing. I think uh, that's too bad. All right, well Lombardi, terrific as always. 
Thank you for joining Thank us. Thank you, guys. I, I always enjoy it, guys. I appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, Mike. You know, anything Go. you need, Sal, you can let me know. Whatever you need. Of How's course, Pat. Is everybody making money? No, no one's no, making money. I, 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 it was just an awful, <laughs> awful week. I, I mean, I, I'm, uh, I you was know. bad too. I, I ended up bad this week, but I'm, uh, I'm 21 and 15. But I, last week we kicked my ass. Give me a winner. Do, do you have a winner yet, or no? I, I don't have any winners yet. I'm going to start working on my power rankings right now when I hang up. But it's been and this. Now it gets a little bit harder because you, the motivation of the teams. Like last week, I thought, I thought the best bet on the board last week was Atlanta. Uh, and oh. I wasn't sure that Cordell Patterson was going to play. That, that's the only thing that held me back. Oh, Jacksonville's terrible. Jacksonville's terrible. You think so? So, you've, if, if Adam, you, you know, obviously, like the Lions are trying what, to get a uh, win, you know, but Jacksonville's the worst. Of, we can make fun of the Clapper. We can make fun of, Jay, uh, of, of, of Mike McCarthy. You know, mm-hmm. the great chess match between Matt Campbell and Matt, Ka- and, uh, Matt Nagy. Mm-hmm. But when they asked when they asked Urban Meyer about why James Robinson wasn't on the field in the goal line situation, he gave the, the answer that almost I almost threw up. He, now he has a job. Just let's get this straight. <laughs> he has a job that's harder to get than the United States Senate. We understand that, right? right. There's only 32 of these jobs. Mm-hmm. So when they asked him why Robinson wasn't on the field, he said, "Check with Brian Schottenheimer and Daryl Bevel. I don't micromanage." Wow. Could you, wow, I mean, that's could pretty you imagine good. Belichick saying that? No, he wouldn't say anything. He would have grunted and left the press conference. That's amazing. <laughs> That's, That's my amazing. parting shot. Urban <laughs> Love it. He's the worst, Lot, Mike. He is the worst. Lots of parting shots. Yeah, yeah, he must see all these deals and be going nuts. It's like, oh, I, I screwed up like six up. times. Of course, of course. Uh, the GM Shuffle. Check it out. Mike Thank Lombardi, thanks for coming Appreciate on, pal. It. Thanks, Appreciate it. Mike. Thanks, everybody. All, all right, Mike. take care, bye. Appreciate it. 